Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Louie Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Dan, who just brought a message about prayer baggage. Welcome, Pastor Dan. Thanks. Um, so we're still in the resolve for more, mm -hmm. and we've talked a lot about reading the Bible. We've talked about prayer. We've talked yeah. about generosity and doing these things in community. Mm -hmm. And today you talked about a challenge that many of us face um, sure. when we go to pray. Um, it is a relationship with God, and we can find out that sometimes there's some healing that needs to happen yeah. in that relationship. Um, and so I'm just going to ask a few questions uh, that came in around that. The first one, though, is about prayer. Um, you, you gave us a great illustration of the woman who began to pray, and the thought popped into her head. Mm -hmm. And that's very common. Sure. Um, so what techniques can we use to help with prayer and devotions from being sidetracked by these distracting thoughts? Yeah. Well, I would go back to the suggestion that Pastor Ken made in his sermon on prayer, uh, keeping a pad right nearby or uh, post-it notes. And whenever a thought comes in that isn't supposed to be there, just take a moment and write it down. And there's something about getting it down on paper that sort of cleanses it from the mind and you can get right back. Um, another technique that I have used is I... Um, give myself three or four minutes just to kind of decompress before mm -hmm. I really start focused praying. And I find that very helpful to just kind of clear my mind of whatever has happened in the day or whatever is coming up. And then I can turn my full attention to, mm -hmm. to God. I, I found those two to be the most helpful. That's good. That's good. Um, and so we, you talked about praying, um, and asking God for help and healing with your baggage. And this, this question says, um, I've prayed for years for God to take away some of my baggage and he never has. Um, how can he want to, if it hasn't happened? Sure. Yeah. Well, not an uncommon question when we mm -hmm. talk about things like this. Um, there are several ways I can answer this question. The, the first thing that I should say is I don't have access to the full mind of God, so I cannot completely speak for Him as to why He does or does not do certain things. After all, He is God. But leaving that aside, um, I think there are several factors involved here. F first of all, um, Sometimes what we perceive to be baggage is actually something God is using mm. to sanctify us, to conform us to the image of His Son. And while it may be very painful and not very much fun, there is a purpose in it. I'm thinking about Paul who mm. prayed fervently several times, Lord, please take this thorn out of my flesh. We don't know what it was, but it was something difficult. And God said, no, you know, my grace is sufficient for you. And so I think in some instances, he concludes in his wisdom, um, you need this for my purposes, or I'm going to allow it to stay for my purposes. Now, whether that is the case with this individual, I can't say with certainty. That's not a blanket principle. That tends to be a very specific sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, I think sometimes, too, when we ask God for something and the answer that we want is not forthcoming, uh, sometimes we have to examine our own motives. Why am I asking for this? What is it that I really want from God? I'm not questioning this person's motives because I don't know them. But I know that in my life, I have asked God for things. And at the end of the day, it was all about me. It wasn't about glorifying Him or furthering His purposes was getting what, what I want. I think one ultimately has to conclude, though, that the God of the Bible is sovereign. And sometimes He chooses to act and sometimes He does not. That does not diminish any of the pain involved, 
but it does give us an opportunity to exercise our faith mm -hmm. and to trust that if he says no, well, then he's doing something maybe that I can't see. That's good. Um, so tell me, what, uh, what is the role of counseling when you're dealing with baggage? And should someone seek out a counselor? And when do they know right. that they should seek out counseling? Well, I, I am absolutely an advocate of, of counseling. Uh, I've received a lot and I've, I've given a lot. And I see that it can be tremendously helpful. So I, I would absolutely promote that. I think the time you know that you need counseling is when you can't deal with whatever you've got. If, if, if you're not coming up with the answer, go find someone who perhaps can. If, mm -hmm. if my car breaks down, I know nothing about cars. I'm not gonna waste my time fooling around with it. I'm gonna go to a mechanic. In a similar fashion, if you're bumping up against something that's bigger than you, let's find someone to talk to. And, and, and we can certainly do that. Mm -hmm. uh, Beth Ellis and myself uh, can either work with you or after a couple of sessions, if healing is still needed, then we have some great people to reference out to. That's great. Um, what was the other part of the question? Um, when do I, you ask when oh, okay. do I need to go? Okay. And so that answers yeah. the question. Okay. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about the Kairos Freedom Ministry. Yeah. Tell me um, what it is. Is it like counseling? Um, how does it work? Why, right. why would I want to do it? And if I did want to do it, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> okay. It, it is not a, a one to one uh comparison to counseling. You, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to go in and sit down with someone and spill all your stuff to anyone. I would sum it up this way. Uh, it enables a person to get in touch with the truth of the Word of God that can speak directly into the lies that I mentioned in my sermon, can speak directly to those lies so as to set a person free. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just information, but it is the application of that word through the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer is very much a part of it. Kairos uh, has two components. To begin with, there are four preparatory sessions, you might call them, where we cover the fundamental truths that we will be talking about, a person's identity in Christ, the power of the word, the power of prayer, things of that nature. And then we have, for lack of a better term, the Kairos event. And that is an opportunity for individuals to come. And just as Roger said on the video, it's pretty much between you and God. I mean, you're guided in prayer and uh, there is structure to the prayer time and the worship mm -hmm. time, but it's pretty much just you and the Lord dealing with whatever he's bringing to the surface in a uh, controlled, focused, safe environment. That's great. And so there are, um, is that staff members that are teaching or our prayer partners? How, uh, how does well, this ministry work? A, a little of both. Okay. Uh, I, I will be teaching mm -hmm. uh, at least one of the four classes, maybe two. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, Tanya Van Dong, another staff person is yeah, teaching. for prayer. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, also we have some lay people who are going to be teaching the classes as well, sharing out of their own experience, their own lives. So it, it's a mix and of staff and lay. And it's a series. I would come to all four. All four. You come yeah. to all four classes. Yeah. It, okay. It's not required, but mm -hmm. I think you'd get the maximum impact if, if you came to all okay. four. Mm -hmm. And then we are hoping uh, next fall to be able to offer the event. Okay. Uh, and between now and then, we will offer this series of classes two or three times mm -hmm. at least, uh, getting ready uh, for that Kairos event. It's exciting. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to, to see what God yeah. does through this ministry. Yeah, me so, too. Thank you for your message today sure. and look forward to hearing the stories of how God works through this. Thanks. All right, and thank you for joining us here at Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.